I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this gorgeous card with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. Click the links for the products to be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up. And there's also a PayPal button if you would like to order the card kit from me. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. I almost never buy a suite of products, but in this case I am using all of the products from the Peony Garden Suite. If you order the card kit from me, you'll just need the prize Peony stamp set. And you will need the Petal Pink and the Garden Green Stamp and Blend, the Versamark Pad, and the white embossing powder. I do have an alternative if you don't want to get involved with embossing. Those products are pretty inexpensive. This is still fairly inexpensive, but you'll need a heat tool if you decide to do embossing. And you'll also need the gray granite ink pad. You might want to go ahead and buy the whole suite of Prize Peony. You would get the Prize Peony and the coordinating dies and the dainty diamonds embossing folder. You would also get the Peony Garden Designer Series paper. I just fell in love with this paper. You also get this gorgeous gray granite shimmer ribbon, the square vellum doilies, and the elegant faceted gems. To that suite I'm adding the organy striped ribbon. This is in petal pink. The banners pick a punch and the detailed trio punch. Again, if you want to skip these, there's alternatives. The card kit will have the card base in gray granite, a piece of petal pink for the front, a piece of whisper white for the inside, a square of the designer series paper, a piece of Whisper White for the flower, a strip of gray granite for the greeting. If you decide not to use the heat embossing, you could use a piece of Whisper White. The kit will also include one of those square doilies. And I will be doing all of the embossing and the die cutting for you in the kit. And because of that, you may want to use your Stamparatus starting out by stamping the smallest peony in gray granite ink and I'm stamping that in the bottom left corner and when you look at the case or in the catalog you might not notice this little piece here and I'm using this on the inside as well I'm stamping once and then without inking again, I'm stamping again. And if you've got a lot of space down here, I don't really, but I'm just going to stamp down there too. And we'll go ahead and put this on the inside of the card. This is a stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's lovely. It's compact for sitting on the desk. These open up and they're nice and sturdy. It comes with the platform. This works just like the other machine that we had, except our other machine that had separate platforms, it had an extra little layer inside to help give even pressure for die cutting. This machine does not have that here. It does have it on the die plate, which is brilliant. I don't know if you can see that. It's die cutting that you need it for, so it makes sense to have that extra layer on the die cutting edge. And these platforms are all numbered, so that's number one and two. Number three is the cutting plates, and these all have numbers on it. And then you also get this number four specialty plate for embossing with the 3D folders. You can buy these separate, and you can get these as replacement plates, which is wonderful. 
Um, and there is also a magnetic platform that just became available. I don't own that just yet. I want to show you some die cutting. And these are the same size plates, so I'm using an old plate for my cut-up plate. When I showed you the materials, I showed you a smaller piece of Whisper White and decided I, it really needs to be a larger one. If you are doing all of your cutting yourself, you're not getting the kit, you want to stamp your flower first and then cut it out. But I want to show you how you would work it with the kit. I will do this part for you. So I'm just going to put this on and roll it through. And this goes through the machine very, very nicely. It just feels really smooth. Pops right out. And you'll get both of these pieces in your kit. And then for the embossing folder, for the 3D folder, we do not need the die. We do not need any of the clear plates. Just going to put our cardstock in the folder and this number four plate on top and roll that through. And I get this beautiful embossing here. If you're getting the kit then, or even if you're making a lot of these, you're going to use some of the mini grid paper or you just scratch paper in there. And you want to keep that from moving. And then just toss down your stamp any old place. Then ink it with the gray granite. And stamp on this grid paper. And then you're going to take this piece and fit it to your stamped image. And again, you don't want that to move anywhere. Now just pop this piece in. And we want to carefully ink the stamp now. And press it into place. and you have a perfectly placed stamped image. I have to tell you, it's time for me to order some new of these stamping blends. I have been using the Petal Pink and the Old Olive a lot, and these are getting dried out. And then I am using my dark one just to color mostly these places that are already shaded. Stampin' Up! has really helped us out by telling us where to color in those. And there's enough shading here so that you really probably don't need to go back through and blend it in, but I will. And then with the light. Flag the end of my gray granite and I found that if I kind of lift it up and push it in and then fit it in here whoops I need to open it up all the way don't I so lift it up push it all the way in fit it in between those and it comes out with a perfect flagged end I am going to stamp with Versamark this greeting, my thoughts are with you, is from the Peony, priced Peony stamp set. 
not perfect stamping. It's hard to do that with the camera right where my head needs to be. Just pulling in a piece of scrap paper and dusting this with white embossing powder. And it looks like I got a little bit extra blur, I guess. So I've got the tiniest little paintbrush. Let's see if I can get rid of some of extra. You just use the tiniest little bit of embossing powder. When you do heat embossing, it comes out as a powder. It's a little bit dull. When you heat it, um, it's actually melting. I, I think that this must be wax. Uh, it smells kind of like melted crayon, but you can see it turning bright and shiny. And I just think heat embossing is kind of magical. So I'm just going to use the corner rounder on the detailed trio punch. This has a hole punch and then this flower corner punch and the corner rounder. And you're just going to put your paper up against both stops until it doesn't move around. And I like to hold it there. And then you push in the center of the punch. If you follow those steps, you'll get perfectly rounded corners. Starting with the petal pink layer, I'm going to put my DSP on the bottom left corner. And then I'm putting it down here about oh, half an inch or so, quarter of an inch. Next, I'm putting my greeting on. And most of the time, you're going to have a little bit of extra hair and snip it off. This one, I had, this piece was a little short, so that's perfect. Next, I'm going to run some adhesive here, right above the gray granite. And I want to kind of add a, a little bit of a diagonal, or you could flag that end either way. And then I'm leaving this attached. If you decide to snip it off, you want at least a half an inch or an inch hanging over the side. On this one, I'm going to put my adhesive on the ribbon itself. So I want to, oops, I also want to flag this end. Okay, and on this one, I want that much adhesive. It doesn't have to be on the whole piece. Probably less adhesive is better in this case. So once again my camera stopped. I'm not sure how much it caught. I think it caught that you have about an inch or so of ribbon and just pull it around the back of the petal pink and adhere that down and then adhere this whole piece down here. Then we're going to be putting the, the doily here and the flowers and I'm just kind of eyeballing what's covered up with this big piece of the flower and that's where I want to put my adhesive. I don't want to have to worry about being careful where I put the adhesive on this doily. I've got dimensionals on the back of my flower and I didn't mention, but there will be dimensionals in the card kit if you get that from me. You'll get about 12, and I have used quite a few on this card, and nowhere near 12. And we're just going to set this here. Just need to make sure that your greeting is not covered up. And then I'll use the Elegant Faceted Gems, and I'm using my Take Your Pick tool. And I am just pressing on the gem and sliding it. And then I can place it exactly where I want it. You get three kinds of gems. 
and they're just beautiful. So I've got one of each. Aren't they beautiful? And that's it. I think that this is just a really elegant card. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. Under shop, you'll find products from Bev, frequent shopper points. If you click products from Bev, you'll find out how to share my Evernote notebook, a completely searchable catalog of all the current products, and I have taggers. You can give a name to each one of those dies. I also have a cardstock sampler with all of the current Stampin' Up! colors. And if you've purchased one in the past, I have an updater with all the brand new in colors. And if you're getting one now, I have a backdater so you can get last year's in colors. And I have a fine tip glue pen replacement tips. So if your glue pen tip gets clogged, just swap it out. I have heavy duty reclosable bags. There are some for the six by six papers and some for the 12 by 12 papers. And you can get a bow maker from my friend Gidget. Under inspiration, you can scroll my projects. You can scroll through the basics. You'll learn what's special about Stampin' Up! stamps. You can learn about our color families and all the wonderful products that come in the color families. Some ideas for coloring. There's information about cutting, including how I store my card bases and layers. If you're wondering about all of our new adhesives, there's all kinds of information about those and some of my favorite tools. Under getting organized, you'll find a link for my stamp case slips, product labels, large labels, case inserts, a lot of color tools a practically free stamp pad storage solution, catalog tabs, a quick reference, and a wish list with a catalog index, basic toolkit to go, and a little compact desktop tool box. You can tour my craft space. Under color tools, you can make your own cardstock sampler with labels here. There's a DSP divider. And there's a quarter sheet size DSP sampler. I have lots of color charts. I have a sponge dauber case insert, color wheel, a color chart with autocorrect and RGB codes under sip together. If we ever get a chance to meet in home and craft together, you can find about my next classes. And you can find out how to join my team where you can save money or make money. Almost all of those resources are free. More organization means more time for crafting. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.